Hello everybody, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go ahead and cover the last two sections of chapter 6. And we'll start with this section, expressing the equilibrium constant in terms of mole fraction or molarity. Now, chemists often find it useful to express the concentrations of reactants and products in units other than partial pressures. And the two examples of other units we're going to consider in this section are mole fractions and molarity and we're going to start with mole fractions here now mole fractions and partial pressures are related through this expression right here where partial pressures are equal to mole fractions times total pressure so previously we've seen our kp equal to partial pressures of products to their coefficients over reactants to their coefficients what we're going to do now is replace this partial pressure term all right with mole fraction we're going to multiply it with a mole fraction all right and what's going to happen is we can simplify this expression to mole fractions to their appropriate coefficients and then have the 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 pressure partial pressure over total standard pressure um to the exponents um product coefficients minus uh, added together minus uh, uh reactant coefficients we can all in all sum this up this way where we can say kp is equal to kx all right which is this term right here our our mole fraction terms all right multiplied by this pressure term to the to the co to the exponent that is the difference in our coefficients product minus reactants of course we can move things to the other side and redefine this for kx all right again remember that the delta v is the difference in the stoichiometry coefficients of products and reactants and just like kp kx is a dimensionless number all right now because the molarity now because the molarity ci is defined as um, moles over volume or pressure over RT, we can write PI over P0 as RT over P0 multiplied by the molarity. All right. And so to work with dimensionless quantities, we can introduce a ratio, all right, which is related to this and write the following expression. And now using this notation, we can express KC in terms of KP. So now we're trying to, to, um, express the concentration of reactants and products in terms of molarity and what we get is this relationship between kp all right and this and this uh, molarity to the uh, molarity of each product over reactants to their appropriate coefficients these are the stoichiometric coefficients multiplied by this term right here to the power of delta v again delta v is the difference in the stoichiometric coefficients of products and reactants all right, and now what we can write is Kc is equal to Kp. All right, multiplied by this to the power minus delta V. So now we have, all right, a term for expressing concentrations of reactants and products based off of mole fractions, all right, and molarities. Fantastic. Now, taking that and moving into the last section for this chapter, the dependence of the extent of reaction on temperature and pressure. So we've seen how Kp varies with temperature, and we know we have a formulation for how Kx varies with pressure. What we want to do now is consider how the extent of reaction varies with temperature and pressure in a more general framework that encompasses the things that we've dis we've discussed previously in this chapter. What it's going to what's going to be important is to introduce a new parameter, all right, that's going to be called the extent of reaction. All right, it has this like w weird wiggly almost E shape. All right. This is called the extent of reaction. All right, it's going to help us discuss the shift in position of equilibrium of a chemical reaction if temperature and or pressure change. All right, so if the reaction advances by this many moles, all right, the number of moles of each species changes according to this expression right here. All right, now differentiating this expression is going to lead to DNI is equal to VI derivative of the extent of uh, of the reaction all right now by inserting this result all right in the equation 
in the, in the equation that we had before for uh, dg, we can write dg in terms of the extent of the reaction. So what we can write is dg is equal to the sum right of the stoichiometric coefficients multiplied by the chemical potential, and we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to the extent of reaction. What we can write now is delta gr dE. Okay, now an advancing reaction can be described in terms of the partial derivative of G with the extent of reaction, and we can write it as dG dE, which is equal to the sum of stoichiometric coefficients and chemical potential and equal to delta G uh, of the reaction, essentially. Now, you might ask, well, does the equilibrium shift towards reactants or products as T, as temperature or pressure is changed? All right, let's focus on each one of these parameters independently. If you increase temperature, all right, if you increase temperature and you have a endothermic reaction, your reaction is going to shift towards your products. All right. If you increase temperature and you have an exothermic reaction, that means your enthalpy is negative. What's going to happen is your reaction is going to shift towards your reactants. Now, if we're considering pressure, all right, if we're considering pressure, if we, if we, um, if we increase pressure, all right, um, considering that delta that 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 your volume is greater than zero, all right, if your volume is greater than zero and you're increasing pressure, what happens is that Kx will decrease, and that means your reactants are favored. Your reaction is moving towards your reactants. If delta V is 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 less than zero and you increase pressure. All right, then your Kx will also increase. What you're going to move towards is your product. You're going to favor your product. And of course, if your volume is zero and you're not changing pressure, all right, um, then you are most likely in equilibrium. All right, so these are the important things to keep in mind. All right, a combined change in temperature and pressure is going to lead to a superposition of the effects. So according to Lee Chatelier, reaction systems at chemical equilibrium are going to respond to a stress, such as changes in temperature and pressure, by countering that stress. So that's an important concept to keep in mind when you're attempting to predict whether your reaction is going to shift towards reactants or products based off of changes in temperature and pressure. All right, that's the end of this chapter. Next video, we're going to cover some practice problems regarding the content we've covered so far in chapter six. Let me know if you have any questions. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful day.